Life's good when you're Jesus! Bear. Bear. Sad. Ah. Literally, that's what the acronym is. SADS. Seasonal effective is stupid. The sun going down at 4pm shouldn't make me want to shoot myself. Hello everyone, welcome to the Gymquisition. I'm James Stephanie Sterling. Now there's actually a good reason to be talking about SADS uh, today because we're going to be broaching on a very sad topic. Uh, uh, an almost depressing topic because we're going to be talking about Microsoft and the terrible woes that have befallen uh, a much cherished uh, company, a household name if you will. Indeed if you're looking for a video to lighten the mood do not look here because we're talking about Microsoft and truly no one, no one has been through more. No one and nothing. Being sarcastic. Let us weep this week for Microsoft, my children, for there is perhaps no sorrier set of suffering saints so sad in silent sacrifice. Indeed, this company is replete with magnanimity, yet receives thanks only in the form of victimization and outright destitution. It's true! The tale of Microsoft, a humble mom and pop business beset by profiteering scoundrels and legislative bullies, might very well be the most poignant tragedy in the history of all video games, second only to the woeful story of Phil Spencer's dress sense. All Microsoft ever wanted to do is charge as much as it can get away with while either consuming or destroying its rivals so it can use the leverage of market control to get away with charging even more. And for that apparent crime, it deserves to be regulated, competed with and criticised? Of all the wanton injustice, Microsoft should be allowed to do and charge and annihilate whatever it wants. It's just a business struggling harmlessly, after all. So yeah, Microsoft has been chatting some absolute shit lately, mostly by way of games boss Phil Spencer running his mouth and throwing his company the shittiest little pity party he can. There are two broad subjects covered that I'd like to touch on today. The first being Microsoft's pathetic justification for charging $70 for video games and cementing the price point Sony started. The second involving Microsoft's attempted purchase of monster-led abuse company Activision Blizzard and the former's hypocritical complaints about the sale being challenged. Something had to give. That was the weaseling little excuse given in justification of the $70 price point, a price we've broken down and challenged with relative ease in previous videos. Something, whispered Phil Spencer, had to give. The company's rather mournful take is at odds with a previously braggadocious justification given by a spokesperson previously, who claimed the price hike reflects the content scale and technical complexity of these titles. Apparently, that's not true. It's actually because Microsoft is just so threadbare. Given our economic realities right now, something had to give in terms of us continuing to run the business with the increased cost basis that we had, cried Spencer. We had held off as long as we could and we still like the fact that our subscription is at the price it's at. Our console with our Series S is the lowest priced current gen console in the market and managing the business, the move we decided to mate was on the retail pricing of our largest games and it's really just the cost basis of building those games and ensuring we can run the business in the right way for our customers. Oh, didums. They did their best, you see. They held off so long. But in an excuse I've heard for over 10 years now, justifying everything from microtransactions to in-game gambling to Nathan fucking Drake doing a Subway commercial, games are just too expensive to make. It is amazing how that excuse has not changed in over a decade. Video game companies telling you it's too expensive to make and sell video games. The one thing they're designed to do. 
the thing they, um, get very rich doing. Of course, this is the line being used by companies across the world in every market, both in and out of video games, using rising living costs, a time where people are struggling to afford things even at previous prices, to raise prices beyond the point of affordability. And it's bullshit. It's not just bullshit, in fact, it's an evil lie. Take the cost of greed, sorry, cost of living crisis in the UK. Energy companies like BP ramped their prices up to unaffordable levels, plunging millions of people into a choice between warmth or poverty and justified it by saying it's just too expensive to run an energy company. And then they posted record profits. Not revenue, profits, billions in additional money well beyond operating costs, the majority of which went to a handful of executives. It's an open, evil lie, and in the case of energy companies, it's a lie that will literally lead to thousands of deaths. Also, a small number of already wealthy people can plunder more wealth. It happens there, it's been happening in games from the beginning, albeit with less lethal results. Mega-rich execs claiming it's expensive to make games while helping themselves to the lion's share of record-shattering profits. And that's the rub. See, Phil Spencer claims something had to give, but not once addressed exactly what the biggest money drain on the company is, chiefly men like him. It's simple math, really. If executives stopped scooping millions of dollars off the top to award themselves, companies would have millions of dollars to invest in operations. The executive class, people who don't need to draw a single dime due to their existing wealth, are an overwhelming expense that could quite painlessly be cut down with a vengeance. Something had to give, claim the people in the best position to give. Something had to give, claim people who never once considered giving an inch of themselves. Something had to give, offers Microsoft, a company that simultaneously wants you to believe it can't afford to resist a price hike and wants you to root for it as it shells out billions of dollars to acquire one of the biggest, richest, most successful third-party game publishers on the planet. Microsoft has spent the better part of the year trying to buy Activision in its continued bid to utterly dominate the market. It's ruthless. It's using wealth to force itself into a position where it can acquire a lot more wealth without competition, where it has so much unchallenged power, it can charge what it wants for products that don't even have to be very good. You know, it's exactly what every company tries to do and has done when it could throughout human history. But if you listen to Phil Spencer, Microsoft are the heroes. See, Sony doesn't quite like the idea of its biggest rival having control of the biggest third-party IP for consoles, Call of Duty. Understandably so, I'd argue. Sony's been fighting the sale, and just recently the FTC has dramatically walked back its previously apathetic stance toward the situation, suing Microsoft in order to stop its acquisition. This is huge and hilarious. And I love how Spencer particularly complains about Sony's part in all of this. Sony is the one major opposer to the deal, offered the graphic tee wearing exec. Sony is trying to protect its dominance on the console. The way they grow is by making Xbox smaller. Lol. Yes. Welcome to fucking capitalism, Mr. Spencer. I just adore it when capitalists complain about capitalists doing capitalism. This is just what corporations, including Microsoft, do. The aim is not to compete fairly. Despite what bosses may claim, they don't want a free and open market. Never have. They want the freedom for themselves and restrictions for others. The aim of a corporation is absolutely to protect itself at the expense of everyone and everything else, to make its rivals smaller, to aim for a de facto monopoly so it can do whatever it wants, and the customers have no where else to turn to and gotta just accept it. Kinda like what power companies do as soon as they fucking can. Microsoft, the company that is currently buying up the biggest studios and publishers to be the most dominant force in the console space, is doing everything it's accusing Sony of. And it knows it. But of course, that's not what this pity party is about. Phil Spencer knows that Sony is doing what Microsoft would do if it were in the same position, and even that it's a very understandable, logical course of action. He knows that his own company grows through the consumption or destruction of its rivals, because if he didn't, he'd fundamentally misunderstand how corporations are designed to work, and it'd be weird if he didn't know this shit. Nah, he knows. He just wants you to not know to indulge in the console war tribalism that has made this entire industry worse for decades now. It's an appeal to the audience, an attempt to make Microsoft look like the scrappy underdog when it is, in actuality, a fucking tyrannid high fleet. And nowhere 
is his hypocritical intellectual dishonesty more apparent than in this quote? Sony is leading the dialogue around why the deal shouldn't go through to protect its dominant position on console, so the thing they grab onto is Call of Duty, the largest console maker in the world raising an objection about the one franchise that we've said will continue to ship on the platform. It's a deal that benefits customers through choice and access. Spencer says Sony is the largest console maker in the world positioning the considerably less rich company as the big bully against the set-upon protagonist. But yeah, that's fucking bullshit. Microsoft has the fourth highest brand valuation in the world, behind only Amazon, Google and Apple. It's got a trillion dollar market cap. The presentation of Sony, which is nowhere near that value as the biggest console maker, is disingenuous deflective shit meant to obscure the fact that overall, Microsoft has the bigger fiscal dick. And it's a dick that it's been sticking into everything it can grab by the fiscal hips. None of this is to say that Sony is innocent here. Hey, I'm Nathan Drake. If you're the adventurous type like me, then get in on the Subway Taste for Adventure. For a chance to win epic trips and exclusive access to Uncharted 3. Get your code on 30 ounce drinks today. Subway, we're winners eat. No corporation is innocent, and Sony would absolutely do everything Microsoft is doing, and more, if it could. Indeed, like I said earlier, it was Sony that started the trend of charging $70 for video games, hiding behind the same flimsy reasoning. Right now, multiple third parties are expressing interest in being bought as their relative executives by a chance at a big fat payday, and the market consolidation that has been the inevitable endgame and ultimate corruption of so many industries is absolutely threatening to hurtle us toward megacorp control control of video games, be it Microsoft, or Sony, or the often forgotten but terrifyingly influential Tencent. All of these companies want to own as much as possible and would own the fucking lot if they could. Because like I often say, corporations don't just want some of the money, they want all of the money. Always. I only touched on it briefly uh, in the video itself, I will probably have to go and revisit it because it is a big thing, the FTC uh, suing to block the, the acquisition of Activision Blizzard by Microsoft. Uh, we had Bernie Sanders weigh in and someone called him ignorant for it, even though what he said was true. We are getting too many corporations uh, uh, basically consolidating, shoring up their assets and, and other companies uh, to effectively gain complete control of a market. Not a literal monopoly, but as we've mentioned, we've talked about these in, in many videos before, de facto monopolies where they uh, have so much control of the market, they might as well have it all. Now, Microsoft keeps promising that it won't be naughty if it has Activision Blizzard. It's committed to user choice. Oh yes, we know for sure that whenever a corporation has said it's committed to something, it absolutely remains committed, right kids? Ultimately, when asked whether or not Microsoft is going to use its position as uh, uh, the parent company of Activision Blizzard to fuck with the market and do, as the FTC has pointed out, it's done in the past and leverage its advantage to withhold advantages from other companies to, as Phil Spencer put it, make other companies smaller. Uh, when challenged with this, Microsoft's best defense has been Scout's honor. And there is no honor among corporations, just as there's no honor among thieves. Wait, no, that's not right. You can't say just as because they're the same thing. That'll do. That'll do. Actually, that's good. Uh, video's good. Uh, next week, it will be the Jimquisition Awards. We're going to do proper ones this year because I've actually played five games that I think are worth a shit. So we'll do that. Then after that, it's the one that uh, you actually care about, the top 10 shittiest games of the year. Uh, I'm off now as the number one tittiest to James of the year, Stephanie Sterling. Thank God for me. Do you get it? Because my tits are huge. They are. They are, like, sizable.